couple as old as time. Complex as they can be. Most chemistry say some. Others say that's dumb. Their relationship's unhealthy. I believe these accusations are exaggerated, to say the least. Watching how they'll grow, and you will know beauty and the beast. Hi, everyone. We're going to be talking about 1991's Disney animated feature, Beauty and the Beast. This is more than just one of people's favorite Disney films. This is the first animated feature to be nominated for Best Picture. Oh, not Best Animated Feature. That didn't even exist yet. And I believe this movie, along with 2000's Chicken Run, are why 10 years after the release of Beauty and the Beast, we would have the Best Animated Feature category. But why is this film the first animated film to be nominated for Best Picture? Is there something wrong with films before it that they wouldn't deserve this recognition? If you've been on my channel long enough, you'll know that I love classic Disney from the Snow White Review as an example. But this film definitely did have many things going for it that made it worth the Best Picture nomination. For one matter, there's the animation of the film. This film has plenty of different settings that we can see. We have the village and marketplace where it's just so busy and exciting to see. Then the woods where Maurice and Belle are both attacked by wolves at one point. And seeing how they are just so frightened. And it really reminds me of the scene with Snow White's running through the woods. A nice great peril scene and darker animation and the sense of danger. Disney, for all the reputation of being so happy, has done some really dark things with their animated films. And stylistically, it's always fascinating to watch. Now, of course, The Beast Castle is the most breathtaking and beautiful animation by far. All the little details and some carvings of women by the door gargoyles that look like they're watching you and really ominous. Doorknob shaped like a human head. Just little lines on the wood of both Belle's cottage and some places in the Beast's castle. All the little details just make it another great animated film. The character animation also is very impressive, especially on the Beast and the Servant characters. When the Beast acts Beast-like, he moves around very savage-like, almost like he is a monster. But then when he becomes more refined, he moves like a man, more gentle and civilized. The Servants also really are fun watching them move around in their various ways, like Lumiere hopping, Cogsworth dawdling to try to keep up. And also, I think it's really creative how the servants all are there, are similar to the physique of their human forms, or their articles of clothing even become part of it, like Mrs. Potts' hat is her lid, which I think is really clever. The characters in this movie are some of the best in any Disney animated film. Belle isn't as adored as the other Disney princesses from the beginning of her film. She's seen as odd and an outcast, and that makes her more compelling to watch. She doesn't feel like a brat for wanting more because... She simply doesn't have all she really wants 
in the world. She wants adventures. She wants people that are like-minded to her, that don't see her as odd. And these villagers always making a whole musical number of how strange she is. Yeah, I think you can see where she's coming from. Her love for books gives her a sense of curiosity and adventure. Almost to a fault at times, like when she's exploring the West Wing. But that's what makes her so compelling, because there are more traits, and the idea of some of our best traits getting us into trouble are always something that I find interesting in a character. And seeing how she always looks past the physical appearance, she really is more afraid of Beast's temper first than his appearance. And she's pretty quick to accept the enchanted objects once she gets over the initial shock of having a teapot and wardrobe talk. Then a minute later, She's talking to them casually like she would regular people because that's the kind of person she is. The Beast is one of the most complex Disney characters in my opinion. Now, I'm staying away from the live action film for this because obviously, as is the case of any Disney animated film and remake, there's going to be some major differences. Not as much as in the case of the Jungle Book, but still. However, I do think that the Beast's backstory in the remake really does fit with this home too. The idea of a cruel father, and it really fits with his anger, and whether or not it is that way, and he was unkind before becoming a beast, but in all honesty, one, he's probably a much more realistic version of royalty than the perfect Prince Charmings in the other Disney films because he's spoiled. He doesn't quite understand what other people go through. And later, ten years without any human interaction and the frustration of being a beast and his time almost coming and until he becomes feral as I heard other from word of God as it says on TV tropes say becoming a full beast so it's a lot for the character to deal with he isn't sure on how to interact with people but then he slowly starts to warm up to Bella and become kind the servants are also great characters I love them all Lumiere is very fitting as a candelabra because he brings warmth and hostility and joy to everyone as is most notable in the phenomenal be our guest segment that i promise i'll get to along with the other musical numbers cogsworth is very stern which works for clock caring about time and duties and he and lumiere play off each other so well some of the best comedy in the film comes from these two. The scenes when Maurice first comes, or them arguing in their human form over who said Bell would break the curse. <laughs> Mrs. Potts is another great character, and fitting with the teapot, she's warm, motherly caring, like a nice bowl of cup of tea and chip is just a sweet child character it's impossible not to love him and of course he saves the day in the end at least partially maurice is another great father unlike previous ones that can be very um that tend to not understand maurice very much listens to bell's problems and while he does make some bad judgments, like initially thinking Gaston might be a good friend for Belle, he does listen to her when she says about her problems. Unlike other ones like King Triton or George Darling who need to learn over the course of the movie, which I am fine with and that's perfectly great for other Disney fathers, but really 
here, I don't think it would have worked and it would have taken a lot of time away from our leads. Gaston is a villain that I said unkind things about before, thinking him to be one of the more annoying and dumb ones, but it is interesting seeing how, unlike Beast, he becomes more and more beastly as the film progresses. He isn't used to having all he all he wants denied to him. He is used to having what he wants, I meant to say. So, the very thing he wants the most being denied to him really makes him become a true villain. And there's so many scenes of unbelievable throughout the whole movie, like Coley throwing Maurice out of the tavern, or, of course, having him locked up in an insane asylum. A lot of people say that he really cared for Belle and that he could change. No, I very much doubt it. While the Beast did many horrible things, the song Gaston even acknowledges his terrible qualities that he no one blots like Gaston takes cheap shots like Gaston likes to persecute farmless crackpots like Gaston. Deep down in Gaston inside, Gaston knows exactly what he is, even if he's not willing to admit it. And very much like in real society, everybody loves him for it. It's very honest view. LeFou is another great Disney villain sidekick. And I more admit I love him more in the live action version, but he still works fine here. The songs are some of the best in any Disney movie. Be Our Guest is just a very jubilant tune and so much fun to sing along with. Belle is a nice opening number that really gives you the idea of Belle's character and Gaston's. As well as showing her struggles to get what she wants out of life. Gaston is one of the more fun villain songs. Unlike ones such as Poor Unfortunate Souls or Hellfire. It's content with a nice catchy beat which works with how Gaston is at this particular moment. Then we get a much darker song with the mob song. That really shows the essence of mob mentality and how easily people can be swayed. And of course we have the title song Beauty and the Beast. Which is both a beautiful melody and sung by the one and only Angela Lansbury. Who had several Broadway talent years and also many other movies which she sang beautifully. Now it's time to get to the elephant in the room. Stockholm Syndrome. Belle doesn't have it. Simple as that. For one matter, she she willingly stays with the beast to save her father. And when he's acting cruelly, she isn't afraid of taking back whatever she can. She refuses to go down to dinner with him. She tells him he needs to control his temper. But at the same time, she slowly warms up to him. The more he shows kindness, the more kindness she shows in return. It really is what the song Something There is all about. Something there that wasn't there before. When she realizes he can't be all bad if he saved her life, then she slowly starts to give him more and more chances. And he eventually realizes how much he loves her enough to let her go. After they've already bonded over their various activities, from reading to dancing, I don't need to talk about the bomb scene. It's beautiful, well animated, and one of the most iconic movements in any Disney movie. And then we see who the beast really is around the end at the castle siege. Which is another great scene, by the way. But if I talked about that scene alone, I could probably have another whole 15 minute video. And I'm not sure how much time at limits I have for this. So, 
I'll have to move on to saying the fact that Beast was willing to spare Gaston. Gaston was winning, ready to kill him and mount his head on a wall. And even after that, Gaston still tries to kill him. Beast was willing to put his own life in jeopardy for the simple reason that he didn't want to be a beast anymore and harm anyone, even if somebody had been that cruel. So, Belle and the Beast are a Disney couple that definitely deserves to be one of the most iconic, and they do not deserve to be called the Stockholm Syndrome, or talk about bestiality, which is a total never topic that I am not getting into. Do not ask me to. And the film definitely deserved its Best Picture nomination for its beautiful animation, memorable songs and characters, and a story that was just so strong. And just seeing a couple slowly come into love, which had been unprecedented for Disney before, and a movie that would make standards for Disney to come. Thanks again for watching, and I'd like to thank my friend Gina for suggesting Beauty and the Beast. Until then, have a great day.